Welcome to the Nomad PHP September Lightning Talks. We're so glad that you chose to join us tonight. We, um, the second talk we have tonight is my friend, Mr. Jeremy Lindblom, Lindblom, I'm sorry. Um, and he is going to present on HTTP with Guzzle PHP. And let me get your slides up there, Jeremy. All righty. Take it away. All right. So, uh, we just realized that my slides actually kind of went a little funky when we changed to PDF. So I apologize if there's some things that are a little bit unreadable. I do have the slides published on my speaker deck page already, and they're connected to my joined in uh, talk. So if you wanted to look at the slides, you can do that on there. Uh, so we're going to talk about Guzzle today. Let's see. All right, uh, really quickly, my name is Jeremy or Jeremy Amaya on Twitter. And I'm also the co-organizer of the Seattle PHP user group. And I work for Amazon Web Services over in Seattle, uh, specifically on the AWS SDK for PHP, which is the PHP library that you can use to uh, talk to the AWS services. Now, what's cool about the, the AWS SDK for PHP is that we actually built it on the Guzzle library. So the Guzzle library is um, something I'm, that I'm familiar with uh, as a result of working on that, and I think it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, really, Guzzle does about 80% of the work that our SDK needs to do in order to talk to AWS services. So it saved us a lot of time using Guzzle to implement our project. But you should definitely say thank you to Michael Dowling or MT Dowling on, tw on Twitter for Guzzle. Uh, he created, created it, he maintains it. And uh, if you have any really hard questions, you should definitely ask him and not me because he'll know the answers for sure. So HTTP is kind of hard. Um, when you work with like a web application, you don't necessarily have to deal with a lot of HTTP problems, but if you're uh, working on a web service or working on a client talking to a web service, a lot of those details about HTTP kind of bubble up to the surface and are, are things that you actually have to think about. And there's a lot to it, um, whether it's, you know, the specific uh, valid values of various headers or the specific curl options you need to use with PHP's curl bindings. Uh, it's a lot to keep track of and uh, you know, Guzzle is a great library for abstracting a lot of that away and handling all the hard details for you. So Guzzle is really an open source PHP library, of course. It's on GitHub, it's on Packages, you can install it through Composer. Uh, I consider it to be a very well-crafted PHP library. It follows good object-oriented patterns and practices. It follows the PSRs. It uses good tools uh, to develop the library, there's high test coverage, good documentation, and it's very flexible and extensible uh, via dependency injection, callbacks, and the event system that's baked in. Guzzle is also an HTTP, HTTP client, not a service, not a application, but a client. Got to keep that in mind. And uh, it's very straightforward to use. The syntax is pretty easy. So uh, right here, you see a code example where we're constructing a client, providing the base URL, and then using client get. The get method corresponds to the HTTP get verb, and we're providing the path, which in this case is user, and then an array of request options or parameters. So in this case, we're providing additional headers. And when you use those methods, you get back a response object, which has things like the status code, the body, the headers, and you can also use the JSON or XML methods to get back um, uh, nice data structures that are parsed with those, uh, with those means. But every method on the client looks similar to this. You have the name of the method corresponds to the HTTP verb. You provide the path and you provide parameters. So baked in there's get, post, put, delete, head, options, and you can use, um, I think it's the create request method to provide a 
a custom HTTP method uh, if your server uh, works with those. Then for the request parameters, uh, you can pretty much configure everything about the request that you can think of. So headers, the body, the query string, cookies, timeout, proxy information, lots of other things. It's all actually uh, pretty well documented in the uh, Guzzle, on the Guzzle website, guzzlephp.org. Uh, you can check out the request options section, which describes everything that you can do. Guzzle is also packed with features, including the ability to uh, provide uh, your own custom HTTP, HTTP adapters, uh, but by default it ships with a curl adapter and a PHP streams adapter. So a uh, curl isn't actually required to use Guzzle, but it is used by default. And uh, it, Guzzle can also send requests serially or in parallel, which is pretty awesome. And of course there's the event system and plugins that are provided with Guzzle as well. So there's also additional packages that contain plugins that you can uh, enhance the ability of your Guzzle clients. Guzzle is also a web service client framework, aside from just being a client library. And uh, you know we used a lot of those features uh, to build our AWS SDK for PHP. And Guzzle is pretty popular. Uh, right now, There's it has over uh, 3,900 stars on, on GitHub, which is pretty awesome. It's used in lots of projects, including Drupal 8, Gout, uh, the AWS SDK, uh, parts of Laravel, and uh, and uh, I think, and well, I wrote right here, nearly 1,000 other pack packages packages. I mean, it's, it's a dependency in a lot of uh, packages out there. It's pretty cool. So uh, I talked to my friend, the PHP Bard, uh, about you know some, any, anything that he could do to help this talk uh, be better. So he wrote me a children's story about Guzzle that I want to share with you. So here we go. This is a story about an elephant named Guzzle. She consumes lots of data, but how? It's no puzzle. Armed with HTTP, she knows how to transport text and files of any size and sort. From client to server and from server to client, her requests and responses are RFC compliant. And beyond the basics of just cookie and header, there's much more to Guzzle that just makes her better. From parallel requests, from events and plugins, to web service descriptions, and this just begins to show you all that Guzzle can do to help you consume your web services too. The end. So um, in case you're wondering who PHP Bard is, you can follow him on Twitter if you want to hear more PHP poetry. But let's get back to Guzzle. So uh, Guzzle 4 came out earlier this year, so I just wanted to make sure you are aware of some of the new features there. Guzzle 4 has improved performance over Guzzle 3, uh, simpler interfaces, uh, the event system has been improved. Uh, it does now require PHP 5.4, but it also does no long, it does not require curl. And that goes back to those um, swappable HTTP adapters I mentioned. Uh, one of my favorite things about the, the newer the Guzzle 4 is that the way that parallel requests are sent is is improved quite a bit. It's pretty easy to use, as you can see here. It kind of looks like JavaScript almost with uh, these callbacks. But uh, in version three, you sent these parallel requests in batches. So you would say, send no more than five at a time. And so it would do five requests, send all five and wait till all those are finished, then do the next set of five and so on and so forth. But in Guzzle 4, uh, that system's improved to do kind of like this rolling queue type of execution. So um, instead of creating batches of five, you create a pipeline that's, that can do five at a time. So as soon as the very first one is finished, it starts working on another request in that rolling queue. So it ends up um, 
giving you better performance when you're doing parallel requests. So I thought, I think that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, the names of various things with Guzzle 3 and 4 are different. Uh, the main reason for that is so that you can use Guzzle 3 and 4 within the same project and without conflicts. Um, and that was something that we needed to do and is actually happening in a few different projects. Um, but if you are confused by which what is what, this slide right here tells you what is what. But really, just remember guzzlephp.org, and you'll find all the correct things from there. Uh, Guzzle 4 has a lot of packages. There's um, the Guzzle, HTTP Guzzle is the main one, uh, but there's also the underlying streams, the uh, command and services layer, which is for building, uh, that's the, the web service uh, client framework parts. And then there are various uh, plugins or subscribers that you can also include in your package. Now, there is also Guzzle 5 coming soon. Uh, yes, Guzzle 5 is, is coming. Even though Guzzle 4 is still pretty new, Guzzle 5 is here. Uh, it's pretty close to being released. Uh, why is there Guzzle 5? Well, there's actually some pretty cool stuff going into this. Uh, first of all, the difference between 4 and 5 is much smaller than uh, from 3 to 4. So it's likely that you won't have any breaking changes uh, going from Guzzle 4 to Guzzle 5 unless, you are, unless you've implemented your own custom HTTP adapter. Uh, everything else is uh, very close, if not the same. But the, the cool thing that you, they've, that uh, Michael's added to Guzzle 5 is the ability to do uh, non-blocking uh, requests. So there's uh, this thing called the future response. And if you are using the non-blocking requests, you get back a future response. And uh, that response will at some point, at some time be fulfilled when uh, the client can do that as far, you know, along with the non-blocking behavior. So it's very asynchronous. It makes that tr makes it truly possible to do asynchronous requests. It also makes it much more compatible with things like React PHP or uh, creating some kind of uh, thread, pthreads based uh, HTTP adapter. Uh, so very cool there and opens up a lot of new opportunities um, with those non-blocking types of requests. Uh, and if you're interested in how that works, you should look at the new Guzzle Ring package. Um, that's where kind of the guts for this, this future response behavior is located. And then um, Guzzle has a, will now have a dependency on that package to do those uh, future responses. Uh, so that comes with a couple other benefits. The retry subscriber, which allows you to retry requests, uh, is no longer blocking. Uh, so when you're doing parallel requests, that doesn't hold up anything else. And there's also a new progress event, which is kind of cool because that gives you information about um, the data that's being sent as it's sent. So you can track um, upload and download progress much more easily. If you're looking for an example of you know, how to implement a web service client with Guzzle, I have a very simple uh, implementation. Uh, located at this URL that works with uh, one particular operation of the Twilio uh, API. So I encourage you to check that out if you're wanting to look at some more code. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate that. Um, if you are interested in giving a Nomad PHP Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com or visit php.com and click on the link that says suggest a Lightning Talk. We would love to have you. We post these on YouTube, free for everyone to see. So it's a great way to uh, um, help build a little reputation in the speaking community. So we'd love to have you. And with that, Jeremy, thank you once again. Um, let's put the slate back up there so everybody can see there's the joined in URL. 
please go visit, joined in, and give Jeremy some feedback. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening.